Hello and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to pour and paint a plaster lucky hat. I mentioned before that I wanted to try out this project when we got the plaster cat mold in the squishy box. And I thought now was a good time, since I have some resin projects that require a bit more curing time for the next few videos. At first I was planning to turn down the color of the plaster a little bit by adding some brown paint, but that didn't really work out, so I had to paint it with a couple layers of white in the end anyways. But I made sure to pour the plaster in, swirl it around a bit and uh, get all the air bubbles out of the gaps in the lettering and all that. And then I molded it and it was still a bit like wet in, in it of itself, but it was cured enough where I could easily cut off and carve off the flushing, which is definitely a bit easier to do when it's not fully, fully hardened. And then all I did was let it harden completely until all of the like, dark spots were disappearing and I could be sure that it was sturdy enough and wouldn't actually crumble when I painted. Once it had hardened completely, I started the painting process and I'm just doing some base layers of gesso and then two base layers of white. So in the end it took three layers uh, in total and the gesso just helps because the plaster I'm using here is a very smooth cast. There's a lot of plasters out there that you can get that aren't, but this one has a really really smooth surface and without the gesso no paint would stick. And after a couple layers of white, I started to add on the tiny markings. I decided to go with a kind of orangey black type cat, just a bit more, you know, unrealistic from how the markings look. But, you know, that's just how creativity is. And I think in the end it uh, looked actually pretty cute. I actually toned down the orange a little bit and mixed in a tiny bit of brown so it wouldn't be too like neon colored but it's still a pretty nice and bright orange and all I did basically was mark out and kind of plan out the splotches and then I paint the first layer of it on. I try to keep the edges kind of sharp but I know that I have to go over them again with a way finer brush to actually get them to look really clean and of course I need to add some more layers of paint because the paint I'm using is actually dollar store paint. It's a very cheap paint right now, uh, but I slowly want to use it up over some projects and I thought since we had a white base coat and this is a fairly simple painting project, this would be the ideal place. Certain dollar store paint colors like black I actually like to use for washes and it works out really well because they're watery pigments anyways and especially black is quite potent even in like really cheap form in the most cases so you can get some really inexpensive black washes out of it uh, but it also works pretty well for painting at least the black does I finally used a fine nail art brush to clean off the edges a bit more, make sure that the colors are a bit more even and that it just looks a bit nicer overall. Of course I had a bit of overpaint but I'm going to fix that in the end with some white paint. I painted the nose pink and then I also added a tiny paw pad underneath the left hand paw, which you could see underneath, just to make it look a bit more cute and give it more detail. And I'm using a ball stylus just to add the little paw pad uh, toe things, just to make sure that they will look even and nice. And I tried to space them out in a way that makes sense with the pre-molded cat paw. I think it looks pretty cute. And then of course I had to add some pink inside of the ears and I tried to do a little gradient with pink towards the outside and then I added a pure red in the middle and blended it out a little just to give it the look like it's 
shade it slightly. I decided to go with a red color since I think it will definitely match the optics of the cat and fit with the red nicely. And I'm also going to paint a little bell on the color and the little token with the like lucky writing on it. Just to make sure that it has a base coat because I'm actually planning to add some gold leaf and to get a warm toned gold leaf I like to add a little bit of either orange or red and since I had the red out already I decided to just paint it on together with the color since it was also easier than to try to get a clean edge with a different color after I painted the red color. carefully also added some black into the eyes and I also painted the whiskers and the tiny separations between the paws. Lastly, it was time to use a couple coats of white with a very fine brush to just carefully clean up all of the edges where I painted over. Sometimes with these kinds of models, when they have a lot of details or lots of nooks and crannies, it's really hard, even if you try, to paint everything very cleanly. So just having to go in with a little bit of the base color and cleaning that up is quite normal and handy if you can do that. It always gets more difficult if you have like a shaded color in the body or something uh, when you like paint the details over but with this white it was quite easy it just needed five coats to actually be opaque enough to cover especially the red. And lastly I'm adding the gold leaf and for this I'm actually using tacky glue. I normally have a special glue for gold leaf but I really don't know where I placed my bottle. I searched it for multiple days in a row and I just couldn't find it. I'm sure it will show up sometime again. I actually bought it like sometime last year because my old bottle was dried out. So I know I have a fresh one that I actually haven't touched yet. I've seen it like a couple days to a week before I did this project and then I just couldn't find it anymore. I guess that's just how crafting sometimes works. But this tacky glue, although it doesn't work as well, works still pretty okay. It doesn't give the sheen and the evenness of the gold leaf that the uh, special gold leafing glue would, but it still looks pretty decently shiny and nice, although you can definitely see more of the cracks and you can work them out way less. I'm also using this faux gold leaf that I got from Sophie and Toffee in one of the boxes. Uh, all of my other gold leaf I pretty much used up and I have just really tiny bits left and this works as well. And because the tacky glue of course left some gaps I'm also using this like metallic gold acrylic paint and just filling in the gaps. And then afterwards to get a bit of the shine back I'm just adding some clear varnish. And with that I'm finished painting my cute little lucky cat. I'm really happy with how it looks. It's a really, really cute color combination in my opinion. And of course, if you ever uh, put some things like that yourself, uh, you could just, you know, choose whichever color you want. And I could just easily pour more of them with the mold and some plaster and paint which other color scheme I really like. This one is going out to a friend because I think they will like it. 
And overall it was a pretty relaxing and enjoyable project. There wasn't too much, there's too many things to pay attention to. You need to pour the plaster, wait for it to harden and then you can paint it. So it's a really nice little side project if you feel like painting something but you don't know what or you have a mold that you don't feel like doing in resin because you want to paint on some details. Just picking up some plaster and pouring that is quite a nice option. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a great day. See you next time. Bye bye!